invite at this moment um, our, I call him Papa Brooks, amen? Uh, because Papa Brooks is the Papa, um, is our spiritual covering, amen, that God has aligned us with. And I just thank God because last year when I wanted to just hand over ministry, stop everything, um, and I went to get ministered and I said, okay, Lord, you got to talk to me. And the Lord began to minister and encourage my faith and help me to not give up. And I thank God that we need men and women that can raise up our arms uh, when we are in the trenches and in dark times and we're fighting. Because uh, this is a battle, people of God. But they are able to help us to stand fast and yes. bring forth the purposes of God. Amen? Amen. And so I thank God at that time last year, the Lord said, I'm bringing you new covering. I'm bringing you new covering. I'm going to be uh, uh, providing for you a covering. And, and, and in December, the Lord confirmed again. And I knew what the Lord was speaking to. He was aligning and he's, he took us all the way to Des Moines. Amen? Last year, it began to make some divine connections. Anybody ever had a divine connection? Oh, uh, We got to thank God for those divine yeah. connections. Yeah. See, you don't have to open the door. God will open the door for you. And when God opens the door for you, ain't no man that can shut it. Come on, man. And, and so we wait for God to open the door. We wait for God to make those divine connections. And so here we are today, amen. And so we have today our uh, house covering uh, uh, Papa Brooks. And uh, please excuse our uh, Bishop Baker. Um, he was on, on um, not able to make it. But again, we are not, those of us that are living, Living by the Spirit, understand we are led by the Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit has to set us aside and say, No, you can't move, we've got to honor, amen, what the Spirit of God says, even though there's a program, amen. And so we trust God and we trust what He's orchestrated for tonight and what He's changed because only God knows why, amen. And so we are just His bond servants, we receive it, His instructions. But we have Papa Brooks in the house today, and I want him to take this part and be able to give to us what God has placed in in his life brother god confirmed your message so go ahead and god is with you today listen just go forward god is with you you see that he confirmed to you and that thing that you had that's the spirit of the lord that's telling you he's with you God is here. That whatever the enemy tried to bring against you to not to be here, but you overcame and you're here today. Because God, because man didn't bring you, it was God. So be at peace. Give us what God gave you. God bless you. Amen. Come on, put your hands together and give God some praise. He might come like you at a football game. Yes. I said, give God some praise. Yeah. Yeah. You got to act like you mean business with God. So you need to just praise him and glorify him and thank him for what he's doing in your heart and life. Come on, put your hands together and give God some praise. Yes. We bow in your presence, eternal heavenly Father. We welcome you, Spirit of the living God. You've already confirmed and made up your mind what you want to do. We just come in a sound agreement how you move mightily amongst your people. As you begin to shift their thinking, shifting the posture of their heart, shifting their understanding, that they begin to claim what's already theirs. To walk in a greater level of authority and dominion that you've already given them, God. We give you praise and honor and glory that shackles are being broken, yes, Lord God. Lord. And people are already being set free. So Amen. thank you, Daddy. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Yes. Jesus. Come on, let's celebrate the thank Lord. You. Say amen. Yes. Amen. Bless this house. Bless the pastors and bless everybody that came. Um, as I was asking the Holy Spirit this afternoon, what is it? What is it that you want to to tell your people? Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So I just 
quiet, waiting patiently on the Lord. And he says, Psalms 42 and 7. Amen. And Psalms 42 and 7 is actually a, and is actually coinciding with Ezekiel 47 and 1 through 12. Yes. Because the man of God is actually, he's actually testing how deep he can go with Come God. On. Yes. But your, the measure of your depth is the measure of your obedience. Yes. Amen. When you lack obedience with God, you cannot go deeper That's with God. Right. Look at somebody and say, obedience, obedience. is better than sacrifice. Better than sacrifice. With, with, disobedience, with disobedience, you become the sacrifice. You become the sacrifice. You become the sacrifice. So you got to walk in the things of God in obedience if you ever plan to get into the deep things of God. Yes. God will not speak deep things to a shallow people. Oh, come on now. That's right. Yeah. God will not yeah. speak deep things mm -hmm. to a shallow people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or a people that is not hungry for him. Hallelujah. That's right. Amen. That's you will right. not ascend into the holy hills if your hands are not clean yeah. Come on now. and if your heart is not pure. Yeah. Yeah. Stop desiring to have what another man has yeah. because you have not paid the price yeah. that that man has paid to go where God has led him. Come on, celebrate God. Put your hands in the God. And preach for hours and preach for hours. And when we're done preaching for hours, you go out the same way you came in. There's no victory in that. There's no victory in that at all. Yes. So look at somebody and say, hey, hey, hey today, today, I'm not leaving the same. I'm, not leaving the same. I'm going out, I'm going out with, a different mindset. with a different mindset. I'm going out. I'm going out with a different posture in my heart. I'm going out. To my believing. And today, after today, I shall walk in nothing but victory. Come on, praise him. I shall walk in nothing but victory. set you up before you got here. Amen. It was God that said, so when you look at the word of the Lord in the book of Psalms, it says this, it says, deep calleth unto deep. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Amen. So the deep that was in him yes, come on. was calling to come the deep on. that was in me. To manifest deep in the yeah. 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 Are you ready to go deep yeah. in God? Yeah. Are you ready to move in the things of Jesus Christ yeah. and the power of God? Are you ready to go in a different level? Yeah. A different step? Yeah. sand on your feet. That's right. When you're in the deep. Yeah. When you're in the deep, there's no sand on your feet. That's right. Amen. Amen. But here is the deception of people thinking that they're in the deep. They stand on the shore mm -hmm. and the tide comes in mm -hmm. and you think now you're in the deep. Mm -hmm. But when the tide goes back out, yep. You're still standing in the same sand you were standing in before. So the devil has deceived you to make you think that you're in the deep. And you're not seeing deep signs and wonders because you're still in the same place you was in before. Look at somebody and say, hey, I got to move. I got to move. I got to move with the Holy Ghost. I got to move in the power of God. I got to move with the word of God. Look at somebody and say, hey. I'm tired of being where I am. The only limitation you have is how you think about who you are. That's right. When you change the way you think, you'll change where you are. You'll change the dimension. You'll change the power of God that's operating in your life. When you think that you're less than what God says you are, the devil can keep you buried in your past. Buried in your pain, yeah. buried in your depression, 
buried in evilness and try to take your family. But this is the day that God has called all of us out. We are redeemed. Hallelujah. There's a raging river that's inside of you. And God wants to set it on fire so the world can watch you burn. What you're after, Jesus. What you're mm. after from God mm, mm, mm. is already yours. Yes. Amen. Come on. Yes. The problem is mm, mm, mm. you keep listening to a voice that's not the voice of God. Gloria. Uh, I'm gonna change listen. I'm gonna change the way you think. Say change the way I think. Say change the way I think. Listen, Jeremiah 29 and 11. Yes. Jeremiah 29 and 11. Yes. You could probably quote it. Yes. What did you say? Yes, come on. Who, who knows the thoughts? Who? The Lord does. The Lord knows. Yes. The thoughts that he has toward you. Yes. But let me ask you a question. Do you know the thoughts that he has toward you? Mm. Yes. See, the Bible says, God said he know the thoughts he has toward you. Your problem in defeat is you don't know the thoughts that he has yes. toward you. Because once you know his thoughts toward you, there's nothing that can defeat you. Oh, right. That's right. Oh. <laughs> Claim it. Claim it. Come on now. No, no, listen. It's a process of understanding. That's right. Right there. In a narrow place on, that the man. Holy Spirit will squeeze other thoughts out of you yeah. so you can discern God's thoughts towards you. That's now, right. you've been told you God's thoughts are not your thoughts. God's ways are not your ways. Right, man. Look at somebody and say, that's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. Look at somebody and say, that's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. Say, how do I know that's a lie? Because the Bible said I could be possessed with the mind of Christ. Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. If you have the mind of Christ, then you have the thoughts of God. That's right. Amen. If you have the mind of Christ, you have Thank the thoughts you, of God. Because the mind of Christ Amen. is the thoughts of God. Hallelujah. Yes. But you, you are afraid to apply the mind of Christ to your thoughts because religion has bound you yes. and told you that you're not seated in a heavenly place, oh, in a holy place with the power of God. But the scripture says you're seated in heavenly places with Christ yes. Jesus, far above all principality and power and dominion in every name of his name. Not only in this world, but in that which is to come. Your place is in the deep. For I know the thoughts. Glory to God. That I think toward you. Said the Lord. The Lord yes. Then he said thoughts of peace. Mm -hmm. uh, pastors. Thank you, Jesus. Evangelists. Yes. I'm, I came to mess with you. <laughs> I came to mess with your degrees. Come on. Strip you of your degrees. Mm -hmm. And put you back on your knees. Come on, Come on now. Jesus. Hallelujah. Gracias. Thoughts of peace. Thoughts of peace. Somebody get St. John 14, 27. You get it in your Bible. You know what it says? Get it in your Bible. <laughs> you came to church without a Bible? <laughs> if you came to church without a Bible, you still you ain't, you ain't nowhere near as you're going to be in the deep. Yes. Right. Yeah. Come on now. Yes, thank you, Jesus. What 1427 say? Peace I leave with you. Who? Peace I leave with you. Keep going. My peace. What? My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Stop. I know the thoughts that I have you thoughts of peace. Jesus said, my peace I give you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives. Not a false sense of peace. Jesus gave you his peace because he is the peace in himself. So the thoughts of peace towards you is God is telling you, I'm sending you perfect peace in Jesus Christ. So when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, peace is already established in your heart and life. So Jesus said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, but then he turns around and says, do not allow your heart to be agitated. In other words, no matter what's going on in the world around you, don't let your heart 
be shaken. Don't let your heart move. Don't get depressed. Don't get disappointed. Don't become unfaithful. Why? Because God said, I now already gave you an expected end. And that end is victory. Come on, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Not of evil. Not of evil. Not of evil. If evil can touch you, then you don't believe in the power of the blood. Praise God, Jesus. If evil can touch you, you don't believe in the power of the blood. What did the blood do? Yes. It, only, it not only washed you, but in the book of Colossians it says this. It says Jesus died as a substitutionary act for you. Yes. He nailed everything to the cross yes. and took it out of the way. Yeah. And so since he nailed everything to the cross and took it out of the way, there's nothing that can be in your way but you. Yeah. 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 If he nailed it to the cross and took it out of the way, there is no devil or demon in hell that can get in your way because Jesus already took it out of the way. He paid the price. He shed his blood. He redeemed you and justified you. And now God is not against you. Are you in covenant sonship? Come on, now. A relationship with God? Uh -huh. Or are you in religion? Come on. Come on. Come on. Praise religion God. Religion yes. keeps you in a land of decision. Preach. Uh, Preach. Mm. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Jesus. Are you waiting for uh -huh. me? Release Wait it. Out. Come on now. We ain't no mean. See, I'm not. I didn't come up here. To, I didn't come up here to talk for two hours. Uh -huh. I'm gonna teach you what thus saith the Lord. Yes. I'm gonna do Ephesians four and eleven. Mm -hmm. We're gonna equip you, yes. and then you're gonna go handle your business. Right. Look at somebody and say, hey. hey. It ain't no question about it. No I'm gonna get my stuff back. Listen. Say, I'm gonna get my stuff back. And tell them this is why. God said the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. I am the church. And there's no gates of hell that can prevail against me. Because Jesus has already prevailed against hell. You better praise God up in here. Ask you this question. How many of you want to be healed? Amen. How many of you want to be healed? Praise Amen. God. Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. They, they want to be healed. <laughs> Just keep that. I'm going to sit down because you want to be healed. Uh -oh. We're already healed. Thank you. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. What is the covenant? <laughs> That's right. Why you want to be what God said you are? That's right. Woo. Thank you. See, you ask him for something that's already yours. Right. So that's not a prayer. That's not a prayer. You begging God, your father, what's already been given to you. The Bible says, by his stripes you've been healed. You're not appropriating what Jesus has already given you. You're not walking in the authority and power of God that God already said. You don't want to be healed. You are healed. Look at somebody and say, hey. Stop wanting to be healed and be healed. That's right. Amen. Yes. You're praying and asking God for something that belongs to you already. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So when you pray and ask God for something that belongs to you already, you're not in faith, you're in doubt. Praise God, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ouch. Thank you, Lord. You in doubt. Mm -hmm. You in doubt. I don't pray like most people do. I decree his word yes. back to him. Yes. Amen. He said, come now before me. Come on now. And let us reason together. Come on. Yes. Amen. Come on. The, uh, the only way one king 
can reason to another king if the other king has the establishment blueprint of the government of the government contract of where the king first originated from since the king of kings made me a king when I talk to the king I have to talk to him about his established covenant I have to talk to him about what he's already said and when I converse with him about what he's already said he will do what he said and when he does what he said when I say what he said and do what he done I get what he got Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 Give it to us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, I can stand here and see all the little gears in your head turning. Because you say, I never thought about that like that. Mm -hmm. No, it's the enemy's job to make sure you don't think like that. Right. Praise God. That's right. It's his job to make sure you don't think like that. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. He has no right to debate with me about my covenant rights. Right. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So what do we do with ourselves? Mm -hmm. Are you living out of the word or are you living out of the world? You're waiting for the government to issue something. When your government has already issued you something. Yes, yes, he has. Has. Yes, he has. So let me give I'm just let me give you my testimony. Amen. We had a space about the same size as this. But constantly when I be ministering the word of God and teaching the word of God, the spirit of the Lord kept showing me this large space. This large space we was gonna occupy. And I kept telling the people, you're here. But I'm over there. Yeah. It's called prophetic ministry. That's it. Amen. Yes. It's where you can see where God is going to take yes. you. So when you see where God is going to take you, you say where you you say you over there while you're standing over here. Because when you say you over there while you're standing over here, sooner or later you're going to be over there. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's it. Amen. That's because it. when you speak God's word, yes. God orders your steps, yes. and He's taking you into a larger yes. space. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody say, stop being satisfied where you are and take what God has given you. That's right. Amen. So let me give you a Woo! Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. When COVID hit, those years when COVID hit, they said money was drying up. You had people couldn't have church. We didn't stop having church. We, we had little seats for people to come in. So I had a ministry in the schools and a ministry in the streets, a ministry with gang members. And a lady came to our church and she said, uh, she went and looked at my background. She asked the principals. She asked the people in the, the police, is he doing that for real? He uh -huh. said, yeah. yeah. So at the end of one of our last services, after one of those covert services, at the end, she came up and gave my wife a pretty little angel brooch to put on a lapel. That was wonderful. But she gave me an envelope. Mm -hmm. And in that envelope mm -hmm. was a check for a half a million dollars. Hallelujah. To purchase a building Praise God. that's Jesus. worth $1.7 million. Uh -huh. That's right. Why? Because I was here yes. in this moment of time but when seeing was, over there. Yes, that's so it. instead of seeing where I am, I begin to prophesy that's to it. where I was going. Yes. I'm prophesying to where I'm going. Hallelujah. I'm prophesying to where I'm going. So I'm telling you deep waters. Because the water is deep in here. There's not enough room to contain what God is going to do. You are here right now. But God has already established you over there. So you need to see over there from where you are right now. Are you hungry and thirsty after the things of God? Because the devil will come along come on. on the trading floors of heaven and offer you something less than what God intended to give you. There's trading places throughout the whole Bible. And every place there's an altar, it's a place of trading. Both God and the devil have a right to come to that place and offer you whatever you want to trade. I want to take you to the first place of trading. 
It's in the garden. That's right. Yes. 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 It's in the garden. That's right. The devil came and he traded things with Eve. And what he traded with her, he said, you're going to be like God. Right. She did not understand you already like God. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh-uh. Yes. So she took the lie and lost everything. That's right. But now here's, here's where people focus. Oh, Jesus. This is where people focus. You focus on the fact that Adam fell. Mm -hmm. And you focus on the fact that Adam lost dominion. But the greatest thing Adam lost was the Ruach HaKadosh. He lost the Holy Ghost. He lost the Holy When God breathed into Adam, he breathed into Adam the breath of life. He breathed into Adam the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says Adam became a living soul. But when he rebelled, when he fell, when he sinned, he released the same breath back to Abba that was given to him. Because now, because the Holy Ghost could not be in an unclean, unholy vessel. So what was given to him, he had to release. That means he had no more power over darkness, over dominion anymore. Why? He took an ungodly trade and lost his inheritance. You know, praise God up in here. Right. Force on the face of the earth living inside of you. That's right. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You have the listen. God has no contenders. Thank you, Lord. He has no rivals. Come on. God ain't fighting against nobody. That's right. Hallelujah. So why are you fighting a fight that's already been won? That's right. Yes. Praise Jesus. You spend hours. In unnecessary spiritual warfare. <laughs> I, I'm in spiritual warfare. I'm fighting devils. Go ahead. I'm not there. I'm seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Father, Lord, Prince of Power, to Power, and Dominion in every name. Everything that comes against me is already under my feet, and I'm already victorious. It's the power of discernment that lets me know what's trying to operate against me. And once I bind it, it's bound. Once I loose it, it's loose. The other thing, you won't stand up and take your authority. So if you won't stand up and take your authority, how can you call yourself deep? Mm. Amen. That's right. Yes. Amen. How do I know that you're not deep? I can see the fruit of your deep. Yep. And it ain't showing me depth. Woo, Lord, oh. hallelujah. It's showing me how shallow you are. Oh. That's right. How do I know it's showing me how shallow you are? Oh, you Lord. You still get in the attitude with people. Yes, yeah. oh, Lord. You still cussing. You still mad. You still angry. That's, but if you was deep, you would be bearing the fruit of the Spirit. That's right. right. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. You That's right. Amen. Oh, you oh, that's not what you wanted. You wanted me to come and preach a message where you could jump up and dance and spring around. That's not who I am. That's right. And a pastor is a reformer. A pastor is a person that brings the living word of God, that brings transformation and change. An apostle brings a word that's going to cause you to be hungry. A apostle brings a word that you're going to want to jump up and go get your stuff. Go get your inheritance and realize you're greater than where you are. You just imagine things wrong. Change your mind. Change your heart. Change your conversation. And I guarantee you that God will change your situation. Somebody say, hey, hey. what's hey. my strongest weapon? What's my strongest, strongest weapon? weapon? Choice. 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 That's, right. That's, Choice. That's it. Yes. Choice is your strong weapon. That's it. Amen. Choice. Hallelujah. Choice. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. Come on now. Praise God, Jesus. Who are you going to serve? Uh -huh. Who are you going to serve with your heart? Uh -huh. Who are you going to serve with your mind? There you go. Who are you going to serve with your conversation? And I'm not talking about church on Sunday morning. Yeah, come on. What's your week look like? Yes, that's Amen. right. Are you living from week to week, week because your conversation is weak? Hallelujah. And you have no authority and power because you're not saying what that's God right. has already said? Oh, come on. Come on. Dominion has already been given. 
But what's dominating you? What's dominating you? What's dominating you? Hallelujah. Your choices are dominating you. That's right. Your yes. feelings are dominating That's you. It. That's Hallelujah. it. Hallelujah. Yes. Give honor to my wife to be killed. Hallelujah. Bless my heart. You see that you got in church talking. I'm talking about feelings. Do you know you can't fake away your feelings? Mm -hmm. You binding your feelings. You trying to fake away your feelings. You know why you can't fake away your feelings? Because God created you with feelings. That's it. Yes. Yes. He created you with feelings, but he gave you a gift of faith. Amen. And you choose to lean to your feelings more than you do to operate in faith. Ooh, Lord. Hallelujah. Ooh, yes. Yes. Amen. When you get finished screaming and crying and rolling around on the floor and doing all of that because you're going through something, mm. when you get finished mm. and call on God, that's when he's going to answer. That's right. it. Oh. Amen. That's it. Thank you, Lord. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. So you can look at their faces. Yeah. And then all their faces. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. That's like a cow looking at a new gate. This is what I got right here. Everything that I just said, is it truth? Is it in your Bible? Is it, do people, is everybody functioning in it? No. No, you know why it's not, you're not functioning in it? Because it's too narrow. And when you go down the narrow path, the pressure and the squeeze of the Holy Spirit that's trying to kill your cardiality and bring you into supernatural spiritual reality, it's crushing your thoughts, crushing your desire. So you possess the mind of Christ and the word of God is written on the heart of your heart where you cannot sin against God. So the decree that comes out of you is actually coming from the heart of God because you're a vessel that belongs unto God. Jesus paid to live in your temple, but now you're making him have to pay again because you're denying his access to the of your temple. Hallelujah. So whose temple are you? Glory. Praise God. Praise about about seven years ago, a prophet came to our church and he got up and he, he prophesied this word. He said, kingdom life will be known as a cancer-free zone. That's what his word was. I took a marker, and a, a marker where you can't erase it. And while he was prophesying it, I got up and wrote it on the wall. Kingdom life is a cancer-free zone. Mm -hmm. Since then, people who walk in the doors, we don't even have to pray for them. God heals their yeah. cancer. Yeah. Amen. 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 Oh. Amen. We prophesied kingdom life is a cancer-free zone. But how do I know that's active? Because there's no cancer in the kingdom. Yeah. And if kingdom yeah. life has the life of the kingdom, then no cancer can be alive in the kingdom. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, come on, wake yeah. up and walk. I was explaining to some people about holiness in a relationship. Because uh -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> people don't want holiness in a relationship. That's right, Pastor. Yes. That's they right. want to try the cow before they buy it. Yes, yes, yes. that's right. <laughs> they want to test the book to see if it's okay. Hallelujah. Did you hear what I said? But I will never become a defiled high priest entering into a temple, hallelujah, that belongs to God without the permission and the power of God. Because if you go in any other way, you are illegal. And whatever you deposit in there is demonic and it ain't righteous. You got to bust God up in here, hallelujah. Stop playing with the devil. In this relationship, this is an altar for trading places. Oh, come on. And if I defile it, I've traded places with God and holiness for the enemy to come in and destroy yes. our future. That's right. 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 Amen. Oh, yes. Now. Yes. Oh, Woo, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Only one high priest was ever allowed in the Holy of Holies. That's right. Yes. Only one high priest yes. can go in the Holy of Holies. Yes. That's it. Only, only the high priest can go in the Holy of Holies. Mm -hmm. That's right. 
Only the high priest can go in the Holy of Holies. When you see the design of a woman's body by the plan of God, only one high priest can go in the Holy of Holies. Yes, only one. Let me give you this. No matter how many times I've been to her house, that's going to be our house, I have never crossed the threshold of her oh, bedroom. Yes. Praise God. I have never crossed the never crossed the threshold of her bedroom. You know why? Uh -huh. That is a holy place. Yes. That's right. It's a holy place. It said the marriage bed is undefiled. If I cross that veil, if I tear that veil illegally, I bring in evil into the relationship. Ooh, and yes. that's why I... Ah. Yes, that's it. You're Amen. Yes, yes. You back again looking like, like that cow looking at a new guy? Like I'm preaching some different gospel. Right. But the Bible says if any man come unto you preaching any other gospel, consider that man a cursing. He said don't even let that man in your house. Don't even. What are you doing? That's right. Come on. Santo Dios. Uh -huh. You want the best of God, but you want to give God the rest of you. That's right. Yes. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Yes. That's right. There is a cry that God is calling us to get deeper. Mm -hmm. But you will never get deeper if you remain carnal. That's right. Yes. Our carnal mind is an enemy against God. Oh, right. Lord. Thank you. You Jesus. sow to the flesh, you're going to reap corruption. That's right. You sow to the spirit, you reap life yes, everlasting. Amen. Now listen, how do I know where your seed is being sown? Ah, I can see it in the harvest yes. of your life. Yes, come on. Praise God. Hallelujah. How is it that this Bible says that God's blessings would overtake you, but you're looking for them? Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wait. Wait, I gotta go back and ask the Bible scholar. Does the Bible say that the blessings of the Lord will overtake you? Yes. That means I don't have to look for him. That means if I obey him, his blessings will overtake me. That's right. You didn't tell me I ain't gotta beg God to be blessed. No. I ain't gotta cry, bless me, God, bless me, God, bless me, no. Oh, if I obey God, his blessings will overtake me. His blessings will overrun me. His blessings will look for me. I don't have to look for this. Hallelujah. Praise God. Wait. Don't listen to me. Listen to him. <laughs> Everything the Holy Spirit has had me to say. He didn't check it in himself. He's been examining me. He's been examining my spirit. He's been examining the word of God. And he's saying to himself, finally somebody is coming to talk about the dimension of the Like they should be taught. Finally somebody is coming to burn up religious altars. To cause our minds to start thinking like God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on now, Lord. That's right, Pastor. Hallelujah. Look at some. Hey, this is what I want you to do. Look at somebody and say, hey. 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 Why would God tell you to pray? Why would God tell you to pray? If it wasn't his intent. If it wasn't his intent. To answer. To answer. That's so true. Yes. Come on. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Why would God say pray? That's right. If his, his intent wasn't to answer you. He said, call me. Yes. Who what? Yes. 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 Call me and what? I will answer. He will do what? He didn't say if. He didn't say eyes, knees, eyes, but. He didn't say answering you was based on somebody else's thoughts, yeah. desires, or condition. Right. He said, if you call me, yeah. I will answer you. Uh-huh. See, but you're not calling to God, you're complaining. Uh oh, come on. Uh-oh. 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 Uh -oh. You're complaining. Uh -huh. You going to God talking about the mountain. Uh-huh. You going to God. You going to God talking about how big your mountain is. You going to God talking about all your pain and all your suffering. And God says, speak to the mountain. Come on. Yeah. God said, don't talk to me, talk to the mountain. Because if you talk to the mountain like I talked, like David talked to Goliath, the same way David cut Goliath's head off, the mountain will die and have to run away from you. Hallelujah. That's your right. That's your inheritance. That's your dominion. That's your authority. That's your power that God has given. How do I know? How do I know? Because he said it. Right. 
He said, That's right. he said This it. word says, God said, My word cannot return to me void. That's right. Amen. Hamas. That's right. Well, Hamas. I got to jack you up now, Bible scholar. <laughs> <laughs> he said, My word cannot return to me void. That's right. Well, if you look in the book of John, Jesus was the word that was made flesh. That's right. That's right. Yes. He came and dwelt among us. Amen. Come on. Come on, Bible scholar. <laughs> If the word came down and was made fast and dwelt among us. The reason God's word cannot go back to him void is because the word went back to him and filled him void. There's no more void. There's no more veil. There's no more darkness. Jesus restored it all and went back to the Father and gave you your life and inheritance. Hallelujah. Let's jump over Romans the fifth chapter. The same garden that Adam lost, God gave it back to you. He gave it back to you. Everything that Adam had in the garden, Jesus gave it back to you. But you're afraid to take it. That's right. It's good. It's good. Keep going. Keep going. No, because if, if, if you get fat on Revelation... It'll stop your participation. <laughs> you need to take a minute to meditate <coughs> to understand how much it is do you really want? Do you really want to be deep in the things of God? Let me show you. When you're deep in the things of God, devils don't mess with you. Come on now. Right. Devils don't mess with you. That's right. You know why devils don't mess with you when you're deep in the things of God? Because the devil don't want you practicing your faith on him. Come on. Come on. Because if you practice your faith on the devil, that's going to make you stronger. He don't want you stronger. Yes. He wants you weak. Yes. The scripture says that Satan walks about like a roaring lion, yeah. seeking who? who he may devour. Say that again. Who he may devour. Who? Say who that again. Who he may devour. What's your name? Anthony. Your name ain't May. Who could? Your name ain't May. Since your name ain't May, and he's walking around seeking whom he may devour, oh. if your name is not May, That's then right. that means he cannot devour yes. you because your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And you don't know your name. That's right. 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 That's Jesus is going to answer. That's right. That's right. Oh, oops. Uh huh. Oops. Oops. Your gun's loaded, Anthony. Gloria a Dios. You can load it the way it is. But look what happened. Look what happened to you in this moment of time how your thinking has been transformed and changed. All right, come on now. Look what what you'll do. Thank you, Lord. Look at how you go take the stuff back that belongs to you. Mm -hmm. Do you know a generational curse cannot operate in your life without your permission? Yes. Come on now. Hallelujah. That's right. Come on. The book of Proverbs says a curse without a cause cannot light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. A curse without a cause cannot light. Right. But it actually means the curse has to have a legal right That's to right. be in your life. That's right. And if you understand this word, yes. the legal right for a curse to be in your life was destroyed when Jesus shed his blood in your behalf. No curse has the power to cross the blood of Jesus Christ. Did you hear what I said? You, you don't have to be under what your father did, what your great grandfather did, under one of those covenants. The blood of Jesus Christ erased all that. And the only man that can come back in your life is through his obedience. A curse is not a cause to not hold. And since Jesus became the cause, that destroyed the curse he can't be in your life. That's right. Amen. Yes. Now we're a church. <laughs> now we're a church. That's right. Amen. Before I left, the prophet came to the church and said I was going, I was going to go international. I'm international right now. Yes, you are. Glory out of you. Tuesday, a pastor from Ghana came. I didn't know this man. He came, he came in the office and we talked. He said, God told me to tell you that you're going to Malaysia, that you're going to Liberia, you're going to Ghana, 
and you're going to Pakistan. Oh. And he said, I'm the bridge for you to get there. Amen. And you said, don't go to Pakistan. Uh. Oh, That's what she said. I don't know about Pakistan. Come on, man. I have a pastor, his name is Shabazz Gil, he's in Pakistan. Wow. Ministering to people all day. They get baptized in the Holy Spirit wow. and baptized. Wow. Why? Listen, Beautiful. God is only bound by what you believe. Yes, right. Right. Yes. Yes. If you don't believe God can operate in Pakistan, That's don't go. Right. Right. That's right. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory. That's it. No, no. no. Oh, what no. happened? Come on now. Glory. What happened to Daniel? One. 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 No, <laughs> what happened to it? To where? And then where? Uh -huh. But what did the king do to it? Uh, uh, you snatched Daniel's dominion away. <laughs> Come on now. Yeah, oh, he, he can go. <laughs> Let no man put us under what God is joined. That's right, see? So that means you gotta go with him. You yeah. join to it. Yeah. You just stood up here and said y'all was one. Now you yeah. telling me that you're not one. Yeah. You just said y'all was one. Now you're telling me that you're not one. You're telling me that you're not one. Wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. What's your vision? Yeah, please Is this your vision? No. Mm. Is this your vision? Uh -uh. If your vision is bigger than where you are, that means your vision is strong enough to carry you through anything. Amen. Amen. Because your vision is given to you by God. Amen. He said, write the vision. Yes. Amen. Make it plain. Right. And then give it away. That's right. That's so they can run with you. Right. Yes. Call it <laughs> Father God in the name. Yeah. <laughs> Close your eyes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Close your eyes. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Close your eyes. Thank you. I want you to say, Father. Father. Forgive me. Forgive me. For doubting your word. For doubting your word. Father. Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every word that I've ever spoken. Every word that I've ever spoken. That's against the covenant. That's against the covenant. I bind those words. I bind those words. I loose them off of their assignment from over my life. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Reveal truth to me. As you wrote it. As you wrote it. And write that truth. write that truth. On the altars of my heart. That I may open my mouth boldly. To make known the mystery of the gospel. That I would decree those things. And speak those things. That be not. As though they were. Help me. According to. Matthew 13, 15. That I see. That I hear. And I understand. You said Jesus. When I see. When I, see, when I hear, when I hear and, I'm, and I understand, I, understand. I, shall I shall be healed. Help me to see like you see. Help me to hear like you hear. Help me to understand like you understand. So I can fulfill your purpose, your destiny, and your plan. What you wrote before the foundation of the world. According to Psalms 139.16, you wrote a book concerning my life that I will fulfill every statement of every word that you have already spoken about me. I'm asking you, Spirit of the living God, burn up all of, the, of my ignorance, burn up all my misunderstanding, let the fire come upon my carnality. I thank you right now that from this moment on, the power and the authority of who I am as one of your ambassadors and sons in the earth 
will begin to manifest in my everyday life. In the name of Jesus, I shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I shall lay hands on those that are blind and they shall see. I shall cast out devils in the name of Jesus. I shall launch out into the deep and refuse to go back to the shore and live comfortable in defeat. In Jesus' name. Come on, put your hands together and give God some praise and praise. somebody to come and prophesy to you. Uh -oh. Guess what? Even though I possess the gift, even though I possess the gift, I'm not going to prophesy to you because I just taught you how to prophesy to yourself. Come on. That's good. I just taught you how to prophesy to yourself. That's good. I don't wait for no prophet to call me. Come on now. I open up my Bible. That's right. That's right. And I speak right. what I know to be true. Do you know that God can't deny himself? Mm -hmm. He can't deny himself. His word is who he is. Yes. And when you say what he said, let's say this. Say when I say what he said. When I see what he said. And say what he said. I'll get what he got. Amen. When you see what he said. When you see what he said, where are you going to see what he said at? <coughs> it's in the word. Right. That's right. Amen. When you read it. That's right. Oh. When you read it. Uh -oh. See, now I was getting ready to sit down and get The scholar had to do that again. Uh -oh. Come on. <laughs> when you see what he said, you see what he said. When you do what? Read it. Read it. You read it. When you see what he said and you read it, then you turn around and say what he said. Because you saw what he said, now you say what he said. So soon you saw what he said and say what he said, you get what he got. Because now you see it and saying what he saw and said. <laughs> right. So if you stand up for a minute, you stand right over there. Yes. So faith comes by hearing. Yes. Right. So who's the author and finisher of faith? That's what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the author and finisher of faith. Yes. Faith comes by hearing. Yes. Faith is the word of God. So when I speak the word of God by faith, who comes? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Who comes? Yes. Who comes? Jesus. Who? Jesus. Yeah. Because Jesus is the author and finisher of faith. So when I speak the word of faith, and faith cometh by hearing, when he hears the word, he's the author and finisher of faith. So who has to come? Yes. Jesus has to come. Because he cannot deny himself. He has to come where he heard himself. Does he come? He has to come. He cannot not come. Because if he doesn't come, he's disobeying his own self. Jesus is the author and the finisher of faith. Faith, the God kind of faith, can never fail. Yes, come on now. My God never fails. That's right. It can never fail. Because faith is not a thing you do. Faith is a person that lives in you. Yes. Hallelujah. Gracias, mi Dios. Changed your whole thought pattern, didn't it? Yeah. So you think faith is something to do, no? Faith uh -huh. is a person that lives in you that That's does right. through you what he wants yes. to do. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Right. Stop. That's right. Thank you. Lord. Yes. Mm. Come on, man. Let's come to this reality. Praise God. Come on. You don't have to come. 
coming to it. You got to hold for coming. It's in there. That's right. It's in there. It, it, it's all written in there. Yes. Amen. Do, do you believe this statement? Greater is he. Yes. Greater is he that's what? In who? Who? Where is he? In us. Oh, wow, man, you just messing me up. Man. <laughs> you said greater is he that's in him. Then you said faith cometh by hearing, and Jesus is faith that has to come. And you said greater is he that's in you. So you mean to tell me the one that's in you has already, already brought his faith that's in you to do what he wants to do through you, yeah. but you don't acknowledge that the greater one that lives inside of you yeah. and because you're letting the world around come you speak on. it against the come one that's on. You're letting the one that created the world. Oh. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> the God of this world ain't no God. He's a clown. And the reason that he's he's a clown, he wants you to play in his circus. Yes. Right. <sighs> not my monkey, not my circus. <laughs> Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Totally different. Thank you. Completely different thinking, ain't it? Yes. Completely different thinking. Why? Because it's the mind of Christ. Yes. It's the mind of Christ. It is your right as a son and daughter of yes. the Most High God yeah. to appropriate. The Bible calls us ambassadors for Christ. The Bible calls you an ambassador for Christ. Let me teach you the substance of an ambassador before I walk out the door. No ambassador represents another country unless that ambassador is clean. If I'm an ambassador from the United States of America and I go to another country, everything about me, United States of America, will wipe my slate clean. So when I go to the other country, if they investigate my background, they'll know that the country that I came from is greater than the one that I'm standing in. Yes. Amen. Yes. Come on. That's right. Amen. Yes. <laughs> the country that I come from is greater than the one that I'm standing in. So we are ambassadors for Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, by his blood, cleaned your slate. Yes. So the country that you came from is greater than the one that you're standing on. Yes. And not only do they set up, not only does an ambassador have an embassy set up in that other country, but the embassy that's in that other country is protected by the country that he came from. So all the people in that country that need to be saved will come to that embassy that ambassador has the authority to give him freedom. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. Come on. Now. So you're an ambassador. You're an ambassador. And God sent you here to do what? Colonize this planet. Yes. <laughs> Is that not the truth? He sent us here to colonize this planet. Yes. Because he said before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew. Yes. Yes. And so what he did, he sent you here to colonize this planet as an ambassador. Yes. And every place a church is set up in the name of Jesus Christ under the power of the Holy Spirit is an embassy for those that are lost in this world to come to an ark of Satan so they can get back to their natural, supernatural energy. I know, I know, but here's the thing, when you go try to lay down, watch what the Holy Ghost is going to do to you. Thank you, Lord. Woo. Hallelujah. Yes. Watch how he comes upon you now. Hallelujah. The revelations that you've been seeking in the word of God to understand the mind of Christ and how to flow in the mysteries of God has just now been released. Hallelujah. The mysteries, listen. I see you sitting at a desk, and at that desk, there's a blueprint of something that you want to build. God said it's established. All you got to do is speak. He said, God said, I'm going to formulate and bring all the people. You won't have to spend the dime to do it. God said, I'm going to build. You're going to build it. Okay. And it's going to take place. Because now you know how to come into the place. You know how to come to the 
trading floor yeah. and talk to your father about what he designed for your life. Oh, yeah. And no doubt, no lies, nobody can stop it. It's yeah. him from the back. Yeah. 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 God told me to tell you that he's doing something big in your family. Praise God. That's right. He's, he's, he's going to cause revival to break out in your family. Some of them have doubted your testimony. Some of them have doubted your authority. Some of them have doubted your salvation. But God said he's bringing all the doubters in. In this next season, they will all come to know Jesus Christ. They will all be filled with the Holy Ghost. You're going to begin to see miracles and signs and wonders that you can only... Oh, my goodness. I see you pray for me. I see you praying for people whose legs are shorter than their others. Hallelujah. I see those legs growing out right in front of you. Yes. I see you dealing with bursitis yes. and rheumatism Woo. and arthritis. I see, you, I see oh. you dealing with people who are who have trauma, deep trauma, hallelujah, even mental torment. God said you'll be able to speak to the mind under the authority and power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. To, your discernment is going to be so sharp to know what's going on in people's soul. You're going to scare the hell out of the devil that's been possessing that land and drive him off that land. God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because my brother has accompanied me in this word. The things that you have done in my life. Even no more, Lord. Even no more, Lord. Even no more, Lord. Let my ceiling be his floor. I give you praise and honor and glory for a new, fresh anointing on his life. A new, fresh anointing on his life. Ah. Thank you for lifting that weight right now. Thank you for lifting that weight right now. Thank you for lifting that weight right now. God, I thank you. I sense that weight and lift up off you. I God, I praise you for bringing in peace to that weight, God. In the name of Jesus. God, I glorify you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Father, thank you. Blessed be your name. Yes, God, I thank you. I see shackles yes. being broken yes. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, church, celebrate Jesus. Yeah. Right yeah. Amen. There's a strange thing that happens to me sometimes, Brother Anthony, when I'm praying in tongues. I'll be praying in tongues, and at the same time I'm praying in tongues, I can hear it in English. So tongues and interpretation in tongues is going on at the same time. God said the same thing is about to happen to you. The same thing is going to happen to you. You're going to be praying in the Spirit, but all of a sudden you'll start hearing words. And you'll understand that it's your spirit yes. communicating with God. But God is speaking back to you in a language that you can understand. And the dimensions become so much so powerful that God begins to upgrade you. God begins to elevate you because now God can trust you with the language of heaven. Because speaking in tongues is not a feeling. Hallelujah. Speaking in tongues is faith elevation. And God is depositing mysteries on the inside of you. And so when you understand tongues and the interpretation of tongues, you begin to speak the mysteries of God over the people of God so that can accompany God so they can put that's the land. Somebody praise God. Yeah. 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 All of you that could have grasped a hold of the revelatory power of the word of God, this is a day of change. This is a day of fresh oil. This is a day of a new thing for you. Hallelujah. God said, I'm going to work out some things in your life that you've been battling about. God, God said, I'm bringing divine order to those things that was out of order. And he said, I'm doing it, hallelujah, under the banner of Jehovah Sabbath, the commander-in-chief 
of the angelic forces. He said, I'm releasing angels to minister and operate in your behalf, to take you into new places that you've never been, to give you understanding that you never had before, so you can walk in your covenant sonship and see the miraculous power of God manifested on earth, because God said, my will is that there would be heaven on earth, and I'm looking for portals where I can display me. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we honor you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You said if you be lifted up, you draw all men unto you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We honor you. We honor you, Jesus. Yes, we do. You are King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Yes, you are worthy. Amen. You are worthy of all the praise. You are worthy of all the glory. Yes, you are, Lord Jesus. You are worthy, Lord Jesus. And so we magnify you. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for being present here. To bring revelation and understanding and the capacity and the power of your word. Hallelujah. To transform and change the posture of your people's hearts. Yes, Lord. Father, thank you for the power of the word of God. Thank you for the Holy Ghost that's dealing with the souls, the minds, the will, and the emotions. Eternal Heavenly Father, thank you for the full-fledged power of repentance that causes us to turn around and think different. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Jesus. Open up eyes, Jesus. So they may hear, that they may see, that they may understand. Lord Jesus, because you spoke to the disciples and you said you speak in parables. Yes. To them that don't understand. Mm. But to us it's been given to understand. And so thank you. That we understand. And we stand in that place. Father your word is clear. I came in and I heard. I heard pastor saying. Be still and know that you are God. Father thank you that being still. Is not the absence of movement. But it is your power for us not to be moved. We choose to be still. We choose to wait. Amen. We choose to be patient. Amen. We choose to stand. Amen. And having done all to stand, we'll stand having our loins girded about in truth. Yes. Having on the breastplate of righteousness. Carrying the shield of faith and the helmet of salvation. Yes. The belt of truth. The sword of the spirit. And our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. Amen. God, we magnify you. Thank you. And we thank you. Oh, Lord. For every chain, for every shackle that was broken in this place. Yes, Lord. We give you praise and honor and glory. And the Bible says when the word of, God, word of the Lord is ministered, Satan will come immediately and try to snatch out that revelatory truth, that seed. So I take authority that's yes. been given by God in this place. Yes. Satan, I bind you and I render you helpless. You cannot steal yes. the seed of this revelatory word of God yes. until the fullness of the manifestation of the harvest begins yes. to pour out in God's people. That we see the harvest. And the harvest is great. But you have called us to be laborers. That we will go into the field. We will go into the field unequivocally and unashamedly. And bring forth all your children, God. Even the ones that are in the pig pen belong to you. Yes, Lord. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. So we speak to the pig pen. That's right. Amen. Every one of our family members. Yes, Ooh. Lord. Aunties, uncles, brothers and sisters and nieces and nephews and cousins. Yes. We speak to those that are trapped in the pig pen. Yes. Pig pen. And we declare by the authority of God, come to yourself. Come to yourself. Come to yourself now. Rise up out of the pig pen. And return to the father's house. Woo. In the name of Jesus. I just sense in the spirit. I don't know who it is that has a family member in here that's seriously addicted to drugs or alcohol, but I sense in my spirit that that addiction has been broken now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Not many days from now, ah, there's a coming to the kingdom. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. In this place, would you just put your hand together and celebrate Jesus?